I've looked at thousands of photographs, renders, as well as hours of movies plus tutorials to find some of the most useful editing techniques that will change your renders drastically. But don't worry, because these things can be done in any software, even Blender itself. First, I like to save my render as a TIFF file to ensure that there is no compression. I then would open it inside Photoshop and right away, you'll notice that this looks absolutely dark shit. So, let's fix that. First, I want to add some bloom effect by duplicating my layer with Ctrl J and then adding a Gaussian blur to it by going in the filters tab, blur, Gaussian blur. In this case, somewhere around 40 pixels seems fine to me, but of course, tweak it to your liking. But now, everything is blurry and we don't want that. So go and double click on the layer to open up the blending options. And right here you'll see that we have two sliders which will only work with the top one. Now, if I hold Alt and drag these handles around, the parts that are darker will have less blur and the opposite. After I add something that looked good, I hit OK. Now if you feel that the bloom effect is a little too intense, you can just lower the opacity to your desired amount. Now let's color correct this render, which will make it reach its full potential. Start with smashing all the previous layers into a single layer by pressing Alt Ctrl Shift E. This way you'll have a layer that has all of the previous work that we did applied to it. Now right click on it and make it a smart object. What this will do is that it will give us the freedom to be able to change any effects later on. After that, go in the Filters tab and click on the Camera Raw filter. A new window would pop up and if you haven't worked with Lightroom before, you may be like What the fuck is this piece of shit? And I could be a nerd and tell you what each of these sliders do, but that is fucking boring. So instead, what I would tell you is to tweak each adjustment slider and if it improved the render, keep it and if it didn't, just set it back to default. In the coloring section, you have three different color wheels for highlights, midtones, and shadows. This render specifically didn't need much color grading, so I just left it as is. But definitely mess with them because they are really useful. One another section that we have is effects, which we won't use for now. With that, click on OK, and now, here as you can see, because we made this layer a smart object, we can now double click on it and make any further adjustments as we want. For the next step, I want to add some highlights to my subject which will make it pop out from the background. For that, make a new empty layer by pressing Ctrl Shift N and after that, add a mask by going here and clicking on this mask button. Then click on the layer below it and select our subject with the selection tool. Now click on the mask again and fill the selected area with black. By using either the bucket tool or simply using your brush. And when you do that, you'll see that our subject, which here is this character, is now our mask. But it's the wrong order. So let's invert it by pressing Ctrl I. Now if I select my layer and paint with a bright color like white, see that I can make some beautiful highlights. And of course, if you find the effect too intense, you can always just lower the opacity. Make sure to set the blending mode to screen. For the next step, let's add some chromatic aberration which will add to the realism. First, like the last time, smash all the layers together by pressing Alt Ctrl Shift E and making it a smart object. Then go here to the filter tab and choose the lens correction. After you see this window pop up, go in the custom tab and set one of these sliders to 75 and the other one to minus 75. Now if I press OK, you can see that our render has some chromatic aberration which gradually decreases when we get closer to the center, just like a real lens. Now let's dirty this thing up by adding some grain to it. For that, select the same layer and go to the filter tab and press on camera raw. Now here, open up the effects panel and increase the grain intensity. Now somewhere around 30 to work just fine. 
For the other settings, we can just leave them as is. Now that we are here, let's add some vignette too, cause why not? After that, press an OK, and for the final sauce, let's add some lens dirt. And there are plenty of places where you can download free lenser from, and one of my favorites are the ones from Action VFX, which I will put a link to down below. When you download it, you'll see a bunch of these black and white textures, and the way you use them is that you bring them into your canvas, and then you change the blending mode to a screen, which basically eliminates any part that is black. Now, this is a little too much, so I'm just going to bring down the opacity. Another thing that we can do is that we can add the same chromatic aberration just like we did before. And with that, our render is edited. Thanks for watching, bye, see ya.